to in which from my own personal point of view this is the very foundation for your research this is highly important this is the make or break of your entire research either it is a master or for your phd uh, previously in regards to chapter one as i have noted okay which of course has been taught by myself by my lecturers by my own supervisors chapter one is the structure for our entire research so what are we going to do how are we going to do it which will be presented in chapter three Yes, a bit in chapter one chapter two is where all of this structure all of this linkage of our research will be based upon all right so chapter two is the place where everything begins which we will be looking in depth later so this is our workshop outline today all right so as usual we have our prologue and then we will go in depth into chapter two and then finally the epilogue uh, during the entire course of the workshop, uh, feel free to query any questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Nick Irfan will be the one uh, checking the box message. Okay, for any question. But nonetheless, uh, in order to facilitate the process, uh, every perhaps half an hour or in regards to the section, uh, I'll be giving some time for the fellow audience to ask any questions all right maybe every section uh, about 15 to 20 minutes each section i'll take a break and provide that platform for the audience to address any question all right so mr nick uh please uh, assist me in regards to checking the message section okay thank you very much but if you wish to use your mic why not? Okay, because I'll be uh, officially taking that moment for you. All right. And I'll be providing you the floor to ask any questions because sometimes it is much easier to ask directly instead of typing it down. All right. So I'll inform uh, when I'll be taking that particular break. First and foremost, this is our workshop learning outcome. All right. Let me adjust this a bit because I'm seeing myself instead of my slides <laughs> okay now upon the completion of this workshop the students shall have a good grasp on the very fundamental basically how to do it how would wish how you would wish to perform or how you wish to present your literature review in the correct manner because yes indeed you can present it in an incorrect manner as noted previously and I'll repeat it today, no matter how strong your structure of your research, no matter how rigid your chapter one you have prepared previously, nothing matters if your chapter two is not legit, all right? Because everything will return, everything will go back to chapter two, your literature review, your citation, your references. No matter how strong we prepare, but without the basis, it is gone, all right? The examiners will have a field day. I cannot emphasize the how much enjoyment your examiners would have if your chapter two is not presented in the best way possible. So upon the completion of this workshop, you shall have a good grasp on the fundamentals. It means that the key elements warranted, not just has to be there, it is warranted to be there in order for us to showcase our research. Okay. For new students, maybe you are about to register or planning to register. It's all right, it's okay. Okay. New students shall have the initial step. This is your, in a way, introduction to academic writing because I've, yeah, mixed around with different various levels of researchers. Okay, and it doesn't matter either you are senior level, okay, you are well experienced, well versed, we always have the opportunity to learn. And for those newcomers, actually, it is much more advantageous to you. Why? Because as we have seen in real life situation, an empty cup is much easier to fill 
in comparison to a half full or almost full cup. Okay, so good for you if you are new, good for you if you are fresh, amateur, they might say. But from my own perspective, this is where you can learn the most. Uh, it is much difficult to improve once we are already at the experience level. Okay, but if you are new, there's a vast room for improvement. So do not be troubled. You will go a step-by-step -step approach today. So if you are a new student, about to register, plan to register, it is all right. Okay, there's no uh, specific level of experience or knowledge today. Okay, if you are new, good for you. If you are senior, good for you as well. But I've also tried to continuously learn over time. Okay, so for two and three new students and ongoing students, there are always room for everyone. And at the end of the day, uh, my personal goal, actually, you would be able to become a better academician as well as researcher than I am. That's it. Because that is academic, that is education for the pupil to finally surpass the master, for the pupil to become better than the teacher. So my hope today is that upon the completion of this workshop, you will be a much better student than I am overall. And of course, a much better researcher later on. Okay. Therefore, we are continuously moving forward. We are continuously become, as noted by Mr. Nick Ifwan earlier, a better society. Uh, means that we continuously improve over time. Okay. So that is my expectation for you. All right. Regardless whether you are new students or much more senior students, does not matter. We try to improve ourselves over time. So let's start with our prologue. Ah, Mr. Nick Ifan, ah, open your mic. I would like to hear your voice. Do you listen to yes, music? Doctor. Do you listen to music, Mr. Nick Ifan? Of course I do. Uh, what do you like? Spice Girls? <laughs> <laughs> Destiny Child? In man, in man. <laughs> do you enjoy those things? Uh, no, not really. My father would, though. <laughs> oh, all right. So good for him, okay? Because. This is the question for today. Do you have a theme song? Now, this is how we're going to initiate our workshop today. You think a moment, all right? Uh, do we have a theme song? This is a simple question. Is there any particular music that you like, any genre for that matter that you might prefer? And in a way that, do you have a theme song? So Mr. Nick Ifan, do you have a theme song for yourself? Um, perhaps an alternative rock would do such as me. such as uh mm, <laughs> you like <Limbiscuit? laughs> <laughs> I forgot about I forgot what the uh, the band name was I think it was uh, lost in sound something oh, all right there's something new okay so check it out so that's good. Okay, let's say that if you don't enjoy music whatsoever, it's, it's okay. But uh, the point is, there is a particular genre, a particular artist or musician that you might prefer. So the question is, if you like to listen to a particular genre of music whatsoever, any form of instrument, we can actually use that for our PhD. We can actually utilize it to our own personal advantage in our research and also in general in our life how okay so this is something that you might want to keep close to yourself maybe mr neatly fun in secrets you like best street boys or and sing well so that was back in the 2000 so let's say if you do it's okay it's all right you can keep it for yourself okay you don't have to <laughs> judge mr neatly fun on his personal taste but the point is we can use that. Remember, the journey for the PhD will be troublesome. It will be long if it is not being controlled. It will be an agonizing journey if we don't have the right mindset. Remember, when the chips are down, when all hope seems to be lost, at the end of the day, no matter how strong your support group is, no matter how many people are rooting for you, at the end of the day, 
you are your own biggest support. You are your own source of strength, i.e. you are the one who will be able to bring yourself up. Regardless, if you have your whole family, your friends, your lecturers, yes, indeed, they can support you. It is good. It is great. It will be amazing if everyone is supporting you. But if you are unable to convince yourself, you are unable to motivate yourself, everything will be futile. Okay? We need to start with it. Not just you, not just he or she, it's we, all of us. We need to be our own biggest supporter. We need to find the inner strength. So my suggestion is to have a theme song. Uh, basically, any sort of music that you might prefer, that you will be find it to be motivating. Why? Because this theme song shall motivate, shall drive us forward, propels us forward, because we need to endure the entire journey. We need to strive forward. We are not going backwards. Once you started your PhD, you need to finish it because that's the only way. And the only way is forward. I believe that you can do it, but it doesn't matter if you are not. So this theme song or songs, if you would like to, the goal is to facilitate in making you believe in yourself. If you are unable to do that, no matter how much support you attain, from your surroundings, from your environment, it will be futile, all right? Believes in yourself. Yes, you can do it. If there's one guy can do their PhD, yeah, you can do it as well. You can do it as well. Do not be hindered. And most importantly, do not view the obstacles faced by others with respect to yourself. Some might have a smooth journey. A number might be easy. Do not compare yourself with them in a way that, oh, you are this, you are that. But the only thing that we need to have is the empathy. Empathy towards others. If your friend is experiencing some trouble and, or obstacles in their PhD, maybe just a, an ear for them. Just listen. Have the empathy. Do not judge. Do not be judged. All right? in the way that we try to understand. Every one of us will be experiencing different level of obstacle, different level of challenges, different challenges also whatsoever, all right? Hence, be available for each other. That's it. They might not want your much of your assistant anyway. So just listen, perhaps. And in a way that do not compare that, oh, that guy can do it easily because he's single. Oh, she can do it easily because she has the money. Do not view it that way. All right. Because that will be very toxic. That's all. Okay. Everyone has their own challenge. Regardless how easy or how smooth it was or it were, there are certain level of difficulty which will be experienced. So be strong yourself and be strong for others if you can, right? Because as noted, PhD should not be a lonely journey. Yes, you can have friends. Yes, you can have colleagues. Support each other. Have empathy with one another. That's it. It's not difficult, okay? Because at the end of the day, it is a journey of ourselves. We need to complete it, all right? And this is example of one of the several theme songs that I have. Okay, this is by Within Temptation. And as noted here, this is with respect to motorcycle because I love motorcycle. And this particular video, I'm not promoting the video whatsoever. It's not even my channel. Okay. Uh, I don't even have a channel for that matter. Yeah, the sounds of inline for going at the red line as well as the words in the lyrics of this particular song, yeah, it drives me forward. Uh, this is one of the songs that I hear almost daily during my PhD research, okay? Uh, it's about going faster. And yeah, it's TT, I love men. So you have to go faster because this race is a time attack. 
similar to PhD. It is a time attack. You are going against yourself. You are not going against anyone else. Your PhD and your PhD alone. Your master and your PhD, your master alone. You are not going any against anyone else. Hence, PhD is actually a mind game. We are going against ourselves. Some say we are our own worst enemy. True. Hence, play to me. Complete your PhD, complete your master, and yes, it will be the best time of your life. You can have it as the best time of your life. How? Because you can network, you can connect with other people, and finally, you can contribute to the pool of knowledge. What else would you want? That is like the best life ever. All right? So play to win. Strive forward. Yes, you can complete your PhD even ahead of time if you can plan it correctly. Although not actually plan if you do it correctly in a way. Because yes, you can plan. But the execution, the performing the job itself matters. So one of the things that you can perform correctly and the best way possible is your chapter two. Because chapter two will be the very foundation as noted, but nonetheless, before we start going deeper into our chapter two, we would like to refresh on the proposal or the writing basics for the entire research or academic format, okay? Uh, this is the same slide from the chapter one presentation, but nonetheless, I'll add a bit here and there. Okay, so you are not looking at a completely similar slide from our first workshop. So I've added another example to further facilitate your understanding. Okay, as we have discussed, okay, for those who are new, this is your first introduction on academic writing. Yes, they are proper and improper way of writing a paragraph. True indeed. Most importantly, we need to have a purpose. What is that you would like to address? So Mr. Infan, this is your first paragraph. What is the thing that you wish to note? So that will be your first sentence. Your first sentence is your point. The first sentence is the statement that you would wish to make. Uh, try to avoid starting our academic writing with a question, for example, using the question mark, whatsoever. Some might look at it as improper, dependent. Okay, research writing is always depends, but nonetheless, we try to have it as a statement. Okay, because upon reviewing several journals, okay, it's quite rare that we note that the content is written in a or as a question. We always have it in a statement. So the first line of your paragraph that is your statement. That is the point that you wish to address. And then it is followed by supporting evidences. This is your chapter two. Uh, means that the content of the literature, the literature will be your supporting evidences, your justification. Justification by means of your decision, why you choose to do that, why you choose to do this, why you to follow this and why you are not following that. We need evidence. Every step of the way for academic research, we need to have citation. Okay, because why? These citations are peer reviewed. It means it is proven. It means that we are not just taking it out of the blue. Okay, evidences are important and will be one of the key elements being inspected or examined by your examiners later on during the proposal defense and the viva. Any decision making that you make, any section, every step of the way provided in your research has to be with respect to references. Else the entire research could be of question. All right. So supporting evidence are highly important because this is academic research. We are building our research from the footstep, from the shoulders of others, all right? And of course, we need to conclude our paragraph. And the conclusion should be with respect to this statement made. So previously in our workshop, there was a question that, oh, should we have it in just one singular paragraph? Not necessarily. 
Okay, we can have a statement being spread into several paragraphs, but in regards to the same point, which I will show you in the next few slides. So this is an example of a very short singular paragraph, which is academically proper. Of course, you can prepare or write down a much better one than this. This is just a simple example. Okay. So in a glance, it might not look much, but if we go deeper, this is it. The purpose of this particular paragraph, just to note that motorcycle ergonomics are not generally studied. So I've seen from the participant, Miss Audrey, you are here, isn't it? <laughs> so Miss Audrey is my office mate, and she's one of the uh, researchers in ergonomics as well. So Miss Audrey, I'm sure that you would agree on this statement. If you don't, I have a supporting evidence. Ah, see, let's say your examiner does not agree. Let's say that your friend does not agree. It's okay, because I have a supporting evidence. That's it. The examiner could not shoot you down. They cannot bring you down if you have evidences, especially cited with respect to peer-reviewed and up-to-date journals. Uh, so make sure it is up-to-date. So this one, which I'm showing you right now, in the green box, it is in 1996. If in today's standard, this might not be the best reference uh, because it is back then you can consider it's back then 1996 i was like what uh nine <laughs> yeah i was nine so may not be the best supporting evidence because it is not up to date okay the best evidence the best justification will be the one which is or which are up to date maybe year 2019 2020 something like that so attain the latest citations okay this is not the latest but the problem is, as noted here, the studies are limited. Therefore, there's no citation. There's no supporting articles. Uh, so when that happened, there's two things here. Okay. When the study is limited, your citation will be backdated, not up to date. Okay. Hence, this is actually a research gap, <laughs> which will be looked into a bit later. Okay. So every single paragraph has a purpose. We do not wish to just waste the pages. Even if your, let's say your report or your thesis later on, this very thin, but if the content is of high quality, it does not matter. Focus on the quality of the content. Why? Because every single sentence written in the report, in the proposal, in the thesis, can bring you down. Uh, means that you are setting up traps for yourself. Every single thing you provide can be questioned by the examiners. Okay, so here's an example of a statement and the statement is being cited. Good for me. This is from my thesis. If it is not from someone else, it is not cited. Where is your reference? What is your evidences? All right. So try to attain the latest study. If the area of study is limited, so it is understandable that your citation will be backdated. But nonetheless, in general, try to attain the latest citation. So this is an example from the question previously in our first workshop. How about if the content, if the evidences are multiples? So can we have it spread into several paragraphs? Yes. The answer is yes. So over here, this is an, an example, which is not from literature. This is what I written last night. Okay. So Mr. Nifan, are you familiar with VAF design? Mr. Nifan, do you know what is demo in Ms. Mo engine? Uh, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's learn just a little bit on engineering. Okay, so in an engine, we have the intake port and exhaust port, isn't it? So intake is where your uh, air coming in and then the exhaust is where the combustion output will be exited. Okay, so this valve will be controlled by, conventionally, by springs to go up and down. But there is a design where we are using cam 
instead. So this is what we call a Desmo engine or Desmo dromic valve configuration. This is what being formally, we can say formally, but still utilized by, yes, indeed, Mr. Aud Ms. Audrey Ducati. Okay. So Ducati is very famous for their Desmo engine. So yes, we can talk all day in regards to engine design or selection of operation configuration. Yes, indeed, we can. But the point is, all right, for this example, if you would like to choose the Desmo engine over the conventional spring-loaded or spring-operated valve system, provide evidence. Uh, so if your decision is not conventional, okay, why? So this is, it is what is important in our research. Why? Why do you select this? So provide your evidence, provide your justifications. So over here, I provide three studies to support it. Okay. So one by Satushan, second by Steven, and finally by Gasper. All right. So each evidence is being presented in one singular paragraph. Why? To highlight it. I can have it all included in one. True. You can do that as well but I can choose to have it separated into several paragraphs to better highlight the findings of said research. If I would like to have all of this congested into one singular paragraph, yes, I can. But for this example, I choose to have it separated into several or multiple paragraphs and have it close in the last paragraph, which is paragraph number five. Yes, you can do like this. Still with respect to the first point on the selection of the Desmo engine over the conventional spring load or spring operated valve. Okay. So it is up to you, totally up to you. But my advice, discuss with your supervisor as well, because different supervisor has different point of view. Uh, if you ask me, I prefer having it sep separated into several or multiple paragraphs to better illustrate the findings, okay? So we can better highlight, we can further justify, or you can just say, oh, this is based on these three studies. Yeah, you can do that. This one sentence, you can complete it, true. Uh, but if you choose to better go in depth to showcase each study in detail, you can do that as well. So there is no issue in regards to uh, what if my evidences spread into several paragraphs. Yeah, sure. This can be several pages as well. As long as we keep the reader and especially the examiner on track. All right. So Mr. Mama Irfan, uh, Mr. Nick Irfan, this is the layout in case that you would wish to know. Okay, there's the decimal engine on your left and that's the conventional spring operated valve on your right. Most vehicles will be on the right because the technology for spring design is much better than the oldest. The small engine had the advantage back in what, 50s? Because the technology for spring design, material for that matter, was not as good as it is today. At high operating temperature, the spring will uh, not fail, we can say, but the functionality of the spring will be affected due to high temperature and high RPM, high movement, you can say. So Ducati used the Desmo engine and they won a lot back then. But today, even Ducati has opted to the conventional spring design for their latest Multistrada V4. Okay, I think they call it Strada Lane. Now, we can go in depth into chapter two. So any questions so far? So, Mr. Irfan, could you please check the inbox if there are any questions? So, or you can just use your mic for that matter if you have any question as of this moment. So far, no questions at all. All right. So, ah, why don't I ask you? <laughs> why not? Uh, instead of you asking me, I can ask you instead. Ah, so, what happened? Or from as of this moment, uh, what do you have in mind in regards to chapter two, Mr. Nigerfan? Mm, 
I am intrigued and I want to know more. Uh, I am basically hooked into this, <laughs> even though I am, I was not there during chapter one, but I am indeed hooked into chapter two right now. Okay, what is your uh, current level of understanding in regards to chapter two? Literature review. What do you understand when someone said, uh, can you perform a review on this paper? What do you understand from that? Um, what I understood from that is to make a review on, uh, for example, a statement or something, you should learn, uh, sorry, not learn, you should read from the statement and then find anything supporting that statement. And then you should do your research on that statement or uh, somewhat close to it. At least that's my understanding on review. Ah, so congratulations, Mr. Muhammad Nirvan. You just concluded our show. <laughs> so yes, indeed, that is absolutely correct. So let us go one by one with respect to the feedback given by our friend, by the moderator, Mr. Nirvan. Okay. Uh, he said that we need to study the statement first. Okay. And then we need to review it or we need to analyze it. That is correct. And that is what we are going to do in chapter two anyway. But there is a specific way in performing the, we can say procedure as noted by Mr. Nick Ifwan earlier. So this is the beginning of your in-depth into chapter two workshop. This is where we go deeper into understanding how to perform the proper academic review of the literature. All right, so let's go in depth. So this is from uh, the previous workshop as well, okay? This is the general linkage of a research proposal or a thesis, okay? This is how our research, your content, my content, our content will be interconnected with one another, okay? A good research will be interconnected with one another means that there is no disjointed area. Everything makes sense, everything flow as it is supposed to be. And as we have, as we are seeing right now, chapter two is where everything originated. Okay. This is where the part which I've noted earlier. Chapter two is the foundation. Everything returns, everything can be traced back to the literature. If it is not, something is missing somewhere. Now, although regardless, so I'm doing intellectual property, I'm designing a pattern whatsoever, everything can be traced back to a single point of origin, single point of inspiration, okay? And this usually, originators from the knowledge itself, from the literature, okay? So if you wish to study something new or you wish to study something which have yet to be studied, definitely, definitely there is a starting point for what you are, would like to address, you would like to investigate for that matter. So chapter two is where everything begins. So as noted here, as strong as your structure, as strong as your chapter one, what is your intention? What is that you want to do? It will not matter if the foundation, if the references, the argument, the necessity for that matter, it's not there. So you would like, some, you'd like to develop something new, you would like to study it. But if there is no necessity at all, Okay, your entire study will be questioned. So practice extra cautious because sometimes, oh, I have an idea. Why don't we do this? Okay, sure. Find supporting reason why. Because as we know, the diff most difficult question which could be addressed to any postgraduate student, okay, why are you doing this? So the why comes from literature, all right? So this is what I've noted earlier. It is the foundation, the building ground. Your chapter two shall support the content for chapter one, chapter three, and some part of your discussion. 
Why some, not all? Because beyond chapter three, we are showcasing our own research. If your discussion is from someone else's work, what did you do actually? Okay. So beyond chapter three, the amount of literature as noted by my supervisor will be much more lacking. Uh, the most, of course, chapter two itself, and then in one and three. Chapter three, as we know, is about the research methodology. How are we going to achieve our research objective? How do we wish to collect our data? The how part, the action. The chapter one is the plan, what we're going to do. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. How you would wish to do it is in chapter three. Okay. The decision making made in chapter three will be based on chapter two, your literature. All right. So let me repeat that again. Beyond chapter three, the amount of citation, if it is lacking, it is still okay. Not at all, means that totally nothing, not like that. Yes, there are some parts where we need to say, oh, this guy found it as well. Ah, correct. Okay, not everything. You won't be discussing someone else's work in your discussion. Why would you do that? Okay, in the first place. But just one single sentence, similar finding was also found by Nick Ifat. Yeah, good. You don't have to discuss his study. That should be done in chapter two. So beyond chapter three, the amount of literature, the amount of citation, if it is lacking, is still okay. But not before that. So your discussion, if you can have it cited from several studies, yeah, that is great. That will be amazing. But if it is less, let's say that you are running out of time. Let's say, and you do not wish to cite a whole lot in your discussion because you are running out of time. From my point of view, although at best don't do that, still acceptable because you are showcasing your own result, your own discussion, how, why, this and that. You are not highlighting someone else's work. Correct. Okay. My supervisor told me, uh, this little bit is enough. Maybe uh, every three paragraph, let's say like three citations. Oh, this is similar to that person. Nah, that. You won't describe it in detail on their findings, on their work. That should be done. In chapter two. Okay. So this will be the make or break of your research. Regardless, the entire thing, the entire research could be of question without a proper literature study. So the major part of chapter two will be the research gaps. So for PhD, yeah, this is the most important part because that will be the novelty of your research. Remember, PhD, there are three pillars of PhD. One is the originality of your work, okay? The originality of your work. Second is the rigor, how much or how in detail would you be validating your work, okay? Originality, rigor, and finally contribution, the, the impact made by the study, to whom? This will be important to what area it will be of significance. Without that, your PhD will be questioned. So the three pillars of PhD will be originality, how original is your work? Okay, means that how do you wish to contribute to the pool of knowledge? Okay, so okay, now you complete that. How rigorous that you examine, you validate your result. So for PhD, every single data has to be validated, FYI, okay? So you collect your data. How you validate the data collected? Not just the result just yet, okay? We are not talking about the result of the analysis. Even the data collection itself has to be validated, okay? Let's say you do questionnaire study. Okay, how do you validate your questionnaire? How do you know that you ask the right question? So any idea, Mr. Nick Ifan? Uh, before I answer that, there is actually a question from the chat box. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, it is from Miss Mariam. Uh, they asked, 
to what extent is the literature review should be ah, what right. should not be mm-hmm. included and what should and what should be not <laughs> what should be what should not be not isn't it okay yes okay. Hmm. all right so one way to answer that okay uh my supervisor advised me have a target for example teacher review 30 pages ah, so that is the guideline not beyond 30 pages because we can go on and on and on on literature review because there are countless references that we can find over time true but we have a target my supervisor told me uh chapter one 10 pages chapter two 30 pages around there not beyond 40 let's say so 30 33 35 oh, okay so everything has to be there within that content so what to be there the content of chapter two, what should be there should be on the supporting evidence for chapter one, okay, which will be shown. So your question, Miss Mariam, the answer is in the slide as well. So thank you very much for facilitating the workshop. What do we need in our chapter two will be from chapter one and chapter three. Anything that you have that you have presented in chapter one, should be supported again in chapter two in much more detail. And what you will be presenting in chapter three should be in chapter two as well. Okay, so chapter two is the bridge between chapter one and three, like literally like the connection between one and three. What you have noted in chapter one, supported in two, what you will be informing in chapter three will be made earlier as well okay means that how you would want to collect your data as noted earlier how do you sure that your data is correct how do you validate your questionnaire the answer is my questionnaire your questionnaire is based on someone else questionnaire as well so you are referring to others you are not just asking questions out of the blue you have references for your question as well so for example the question from your senior research uh, that's why networking is important you can request the data collection tool from others and secondly they will be ethics board if i'm not mistaken yeah you need to present it to the ethics committee uh, not board ethics committee in regards to the question being addressed to your respondents so that is how the data collection can be validated one of the ways so how do you know this is the correct method of validating the data collected is through literature oh i refer this guy he did the same so before even the data is being analyzed it has to be validated at phd level yes how you know your data is correct simple question but it takes time to actually showcase it, to actually provide the evidence. How? How you know your data is correct? How you know this thing is the right thing to be asked? Why 30 questions in your questionnaire survey? Why not 10? Why you do semi structured interview? Why you don't do fully structured interview, let's say? Why you choose simulation? Why FEA? Any other method? Ah, that is chapter three. So all the decision is made based on your literature study uh, so that those are the things that need to be there warranted necessary compulsory i might say to be in your chapter two the things that you mentioned in one and three must be supported in chapter two so that is the what uh, the compulsory matter that should not be uh, included in chapter two will be your result actually <laughs> what you will be found that you have in chapter three and beyond, keep it three and beyond, not in two. So what should not be in chapter two is your own work. That's it. <laughs> what should be in chapter two, someone else work. That's the easiest way to kill it. Someone else work that supports, so it's not support, support your work. So that is the answer. What should be there? someone else work that will be the foundation for your own work but should not be in chapter two your own work so your novelty your findings 
Don't put it there. Let's put it chapter four and beyond. Okay, that is the answer for that question, Miss Mariam. And there, there is a slide for that. So we will be viewing that slide later on. So is there any one more question, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Irfan? Yes, there is one more question from Mr. or Miss Hanita Hassan. Uh, they ask, usually in the study, we have independent variable, mediating <laughs> okay. variable, and dependent mm -hmm. variable. Which one is to be emphasis first in the LR at the beginning of the writing? All right. So independent uh, resulting, okay. Usually, if you ask me personally, uh, the independent first means that the one that we will have it, uh, what's the best word to describe it? to have it fixed, okay? The one that we shall have it fixed, that one should be presented first. Uh, but there's no cor correct, incorrect way in which the arrangement of variables, as long as the variables are noted, it should be sufficient. But which one is which? That will be chapter three, actually. Uh, all the variables are presented in chapter two. So let's say you are doing on, I just read a few days ago, on cons consumption values. Consumption values, there are five fundamentals values of, uh, called five values of consumption factors. Yeah, called consumption values, there are five factors of it. Okay, there are five fundamentals. So just mention all these five first in your chapter two. Uh, in chapter three, you can select one of it. Uh, remember, 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 chapter three is your how. And your PhD has to be in depth. You don't have to study everything. If there are five factors, let's say, you will be selecting just one. Uh, why you selected? Chapter two. What are the factors? Chapter two. All right. So independent, dependent, or resulting variables. That will be totally up to you. There's no, uh, there's no stringent way in presenting those variables. As long as the variables are noted, it is enough, okay? Because at the end of the day, your variables and the other guys' variables might not be the same anyway. Uh, as long as it is noted in chapter two, it will be fine. Because in chapter three, you're going to select one anyway. Okay, for this experiment, uh, this will be my independent variable. This will be my dependent variable. This will be my other variables. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. In chapter three, in chapter two, highlight all first. Uh, so these are the things that will be influencing this research. Okay. So this guy found this one different Okay. Uh, discuss with your supervisor. That is my advice because different supervisor, they have a different take on this little things, the personal style or personal preference. True. Okay. So try to discuss the matter with your supervisor first. If it is uh, your supervisor say, yeah, whatever, just as long as it is. So find a way in a sense that chapter two, we shall have it presented all in general first. Uh, chapter two is usually general information. So you can show that, oh, this study have this as the independent variables, this one as the dependent variables, you can do that. Okay, so thank you very much for the question. All right, now we move on to another example. Uh, this is the question by Miss Mariam, if not mistaken. Okay, the method, uh, chapter three. This is an example of the chapter three content in chapter two. So you will be making a decision in chapter three. Okay, I'll be doing this. Why are you doing that? Because as noted in chapter two, this is what I found. Uh, so this study, the way they perform it, I don't agree with it. So I'll be using a different method. So, okay, sure. Uh, it means that your decision, our decision is not out of the blue. It is based on something. So that something is from literature. Okay. So this is an example of the content of chapter three in chapter two, okay? This is another as well. So in reviewing this study, okay, such experiments should be conducted on a closed circuit. 
So in chapter three, I can see that I'm using a closed circuit for this experiment. Why? Because of that. I have reviewed a study. Oh, this guy did this for their study. It was good, but I don't agree that much. Okay, therefore, I'll be doing it this way for my chapter, for my own research. Uh, means that you are not totally following others. Why? Uh, so this is why. Uh, so we need to showcase that. Every single decision, every single step that we do, there is the need for a foundation of it. We don't just do it. We have it performed based on a reference. Okay. That is the correct way. That is the academic way of performing research. If it is not, then it is not academic research. Just a research. Oh, I do it this way because I don't see anyone else doing it. You can do that. True. Oh, I just do it this way because I think it is. Oh, I just think it is this way. Don't think. Okay. Academic research is that point of view. Okay. Don't think of ways. Refer the ways to. How to go to Kota Baru, for example. Uh, how did you go, Mr. Irfan, to Kota Baru? Oh, I've never been there. Oh, okay, so I tried to find someone who have been to Kota Baru. They've been by bus, they've been by aeroplane, but don't cross this street right now. We are in the PKP as of this moment. Don't go anywhere, okay? Be safe, okay? Uh, this is a... Uh, Public message, a public reminder not to go out of your area during this COVID-19 pandemic, okay? So the point is refer. Okay, I have some guys from Kelantan, my friends. Kembali ke mana? That is academic method. We ask someone else how to go there. Ah, Okay, oh, aku naik bus. Okay, naik bus. Okay, fine. It's good, okay? Some say better night plane. Snaskit. All right. So now I have an option. That is review. I'm checking someone else what they did before. So chapter three, I'll be choosing whether to use a bus or a plane. Uh, so that is the basis of my decision. All those train, uh, bus ride, plane tickets, all those things will be in chapter two. All right. So now, the writing requirements. Uh, this is what the first question being asked. What do we need and how do we perform it? Okay, so any questions so far? Mr. Nirvan, could you check if there are any questions? Um, no. All right. None, so, doctor. So how do we review? This is what being noted by Mr. Dick Irfan earlier. I'll be reviewing the statement and then I'll be analyzing the statement. That is correct. So good job to you, Mr. Nick Irfan. So I'll be looking forward for your PhD five years from now, most likely after your degree, of course. I need to do your degree first, okay? So upon completing your degree, hopefully you can straight away go to a PhD, perhaps. Mm -hmm. never know, you never know. So yes, there is a writing requirements. What or how do we review? The answer provided by Mr. Nick Irfan earlier is the short answer, which is correct. Okay, I just check the statement and then I'll review the statement. Correct. But what are the ways to do it? This is how we do it. Firstly, in our literature review, we have to comment. That is the answer provided by Mr. Nick Irfan in the first sentence that I said. Oh, I'll check the statement. That is basic reporting. Yes, you are correct, Mr. Nirvan. Good job. Okay. That is basic reporting. You just mentioned the findings of that previous study, what they did, what they found. Nothing more, nothing less. So this guy said this. That's it. That is the first step of the teacher review. What being noted by Mr. Nirvan earlier, that is correct. Basic reporting. This guy did this. He found this. Oh, why is he crying? Ah, so you just report. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. That is the first initial step. 
So the second answer provided by Mr. Nick Irfan, and then I shall review it. Ah, now the best part. Okay, now is the important part as an academician. We need to find other studies as well. So this is an example here, an apple to apple comparison. So step number two will be to compare. Oh, this guy said this. Anyone else said the same? That is your question to be answered. Okay, so the second step will be to compare. Okay, apple to apple comparison. Be patient. Okay, don't go to apple versus orange just yet. That is step number three. Okay, step number one, report. This guy did this. He found this. Good job. Now, from that one study, find other studies within the same area of research with respect to the same scope at best. Apple to apple. Be patient. This is the toughest part for literature review is to be patient. Okay? Means that you are eager to perform. You would like to perform the next step. Now, that is the hardest if you ask me. Personally, okay? I feel the itch to be answering, providing more. Be patient. Find the apple to apple first, okay? Because yes, you can have it uh, apple to orange, true. But an academic presentation of a literature review, this is the step, okay? We command first, we report. The first initial step is to report, and then we find similar studies with respect to this, uh, uh, comparable scope, okay? The example provided here, a study on aerodynamics, okay, that's the area, that is the scope, winglet and winglet. Uh, same area, same component, comparable. Don't check others just yet. You can, but that's not the academic way. That's it. Uh, so we compare the same thing first. Oh, Mr. Nick Irfan studied on Winglet. Mr. Ali did on Winglet. Oh, okay. We compare. Okay. What sort of assessment these two studies completed for their research? So we highlight on it. Will be their study similar? Depends. Okay. Later on, I shall provide you an example where similar areas, similar component, different research, uh, different result. It can. So do not confuse yourself, you, me, everyone, in regards to the comparison and the contrast. Ah, okay. If we are assessing a study, we are reviewing a study on the same topic, all right, that is under compare. The result, the findings of this studies may or may not be the same as long as it is with respect to the same thing. I'll show you some example later. All right. Step number three, as noted, this commonly eager to be made, if you ask myself, okay, will be the apple to orange. Now, we would like to compare different things, better quality contrast, you know, with computer way. okay? They might be from a similar point of view. For example, here, study on aerodynamics, but now winglet versus windshield. Same area of study, but not of the same component. Okay, still on aerodynamics, winglet will be with respect to downforce. Windshield will be on lamina flow. There are assessment of lamina flow on a winglet, but the focus will be much more on the downforce, anti-lift. Windshield, we don't study anti-lift that much, much more focusing towards lamina flow. So winglet, the area of focus will be downforce. Windshield on lamina flow. But nonetheless, what is this Facebook message, okay? still within the scope of aerodynamics. Don't review outside of aerodynamics. That will be incorrect. 
so although we are contrasting, we are still reviewing studies which are within the same scope of study. All right. Finally, will be critique. Critique will be the most important aspect at the PhD level. Okay. For master level, might not be critical. But for PhD, as noted by my supervisor, yeah, this is the difference maker. Why? Because you are about to, we are about to contribute to the pool of knowledge. Okay. We will not be able to be at that level if we cannot provide our own take on a particular matter. Basically, if you don't have the knowledge, most likely we are unable to criticize or to provide feedback on a particular area. For example, if you ask me to critique a study which is outside of my level of, or outside of my areas, I might not be able to, because that is not my area of expertise. That is not my niche to be specific, okay? So how can you acknowledge yourself as a PhD holder if you cannot provide an academic criticism? And just for useless critique, yeah, that one, anyone can do it, okay? Just to disagree, yeah, everyone can do that, but academic disagreement is different. Uh, I'll show you later on, okay? Because just to criticize, anyone can do it, but academic constructive criticism, there is a foundation for it. Uh, that is how we differentiate between a master research and a PhD research or any other research with respect to PhD. PhD research will be of emphasis in regards to critique. We need to provide our feedback on the studies that we are reviewing. Do you agree? Or do you not agree? Either way, it is okay. All right. If you do, why? If you don't, why? Uh, so this needs to be included compulsory at PhD level. So these are the four steps. One is to comment, just to report. Okay. Second is to compare. This is the analysis or to analyze the statement. Uh, this is the answer provided by Mr. Nick Irfan earlier. Oh, I'll be reviewing it. So his review will be in terms of analyzing the statement. This is how we analyze the statement. We compare it with other studies. We contrast it with other studies. And then we critique. If any, uh, most likely, yes, they will. It's quite rare that you don't have any criticism at all. Why? Because your scope of study, your point of view will be different from the study that you are reviewing. That study will have its own aim and research objectives. Your study has its own aim and research objectives. Therefore, when it is not the same, definitely we can provide constructive academic criticism. Okay. If your objective is the same and that study's objective, there will be a problem because where's the novelty? Where's the originality? Back to the pillars of PhD. Uh, due to the three pillars of PhD, we can provide constructive academic criticism to other studies as well. That's not cheap shot, not cheap shot, but we provide our own opinion in regards to it. This particular disagreement or disalignment, most likely due to the difference of aim as well as research objectives, which is our first workshop. All right. So now we are going to look and at examples. So here, this is an example of a comment. This is basic reporting. Meta and Tewari 2000 found this. Done. This is basic level at undergraduate. Ah, this is expected. Oh, this guy did this. So this is this is fine. Okay. Yeah. For undergraduate, you're good. Okay. For undergraduate, um, 
degree level, diploma level. This is expected from you. Highlighted or reporting, basic reporting. Oh, this study found this. Good for him. Yeah, that's reporting. Good job for you as well, because that is the first step of literature review. The easiest level of literature review is to report. So I'm not saying anything else in this particular slide. That's it. I'm just show that Meta and Tiwari found this. I don't comment, I don't compare, I don't contrast whatsoever. Basic reporting. So this is the first thing that you can do if you are fresh or new students at the postgraduate level. It's okay. Start here. All right. And then you can have it much more complex as you go. Okay, start with the comment first. You can work on your literature review for several months. Okay. Uh, FYI, my chapter two, my 30 pages chapter two from my thesis, we edited my chapter two for eight weeks, uh, every single week. So I'll be submitting my chapter two only to my supervisor on a Friday. On a Monday, he will be returning the report. And then I'll be taking the next few days to edit it. So we did that for eight weeks straight. Uh, even to the point that tomorrow is High Raya al Fitri. Today we have a meeting at the Chancellery. Uh, because that is how we dedicate ourselves for the work. Okay. So the point is, if your supervisor provide his own take on your work, is it good, not good? It's all right. The question that you should be asking your supervisor if he or she disagrees is how. How to improve it. Don't ask what. What you don't agree with my work. Don't ask that. You are wasting your time. How to make it work. That is the question that you should be asking your supervisor. Okay. So contain yourself. You might feel burning inside if your supervisor disagrees with your work. True. Everyone experienced that. Ah, Mr. Irfan, this is trash. Yeah, it hurts you in the inside, isn't it? So the question is not why is it trash? How to make it go? So contain yourself. Hold on to your ego whatsoever. Listen. Okay, because as a student, we listen. Because of course my supervisor don't say that, but he said that, can you edit this again? And I was like, all right, how? Where is for me to improve? Imagine that he said that for eight weeks straight. Uh, just for chapter two, eight weeks. Uh, the editing was five months in total. Okay, five months just to edit the complete thesis. So be patient. That is just for mine. You might get it longer. You might get it shorter. If it's shorter, good for you. But that is the benchmark that you can take for the time being. My chapter two alone was two months every week. So every day for two months is to edit chapter two. So if your supervisor return your chapter two, for example, if he disagrees or if she disagrees, don't ask what, ask how. How can I improve it? You need to hold yourself back, true. You, yeah, you won't feel happy if he's someone else return it. You know, I still remember when I received my first master proposal from my great supervisor, PM Ismail. I'm not sure if you're hearing this, but thank you very much for teaching me a whole lot. And first about patience, okay? Every single line was in red. He checked every single line, every single word, every single full stop, every single comma to that level. Everything was red for my first paper. Yeah, it's discouraging too indeed. So take a step back, ask how, how can you improve it? Okay, yeah, it takes a lot to absorb and digest that. That is the thing that we should learn as a student first, to listen to the lecturer. Okay, that's the, <clears throat> the first thing, the first learning curve, to have the patience, okay? Once we have that, it should be easier. So ask how. How can you improve it? <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me. So this is an example of a comment and reporting on the findings. Okay, so this is again on the decimal valve. So in continuing our example in using a decimal valve, so this study reports. That's it. I'm just reporting the findings by Statistician 2019. Okay. Oh, I selected this valve operation for my study. Why? Because of this study. This is my decision making. Oh, Satu said it is okay. So I'll be doing it the same as he is. All right. Sure. Ah, so there is a basis for a decision making. This is an example of a reporting from a singular paragraph alone. Okay, and yeah, this is true. The decimal valve can work at high temperature and high RPM. Okay, but nonetheless, will it be sufficient? For beginners, yes. For PhD, we need more, all right? So this is the first step to command, to report. This is basic reporting, okay? Here is to compare. Uh, to compare, we need another study. We cannot compare if it's just a singular citation. We need to find other studies as well within the same area. This is where we can say that chapter two is a very lengthy process. From UITM, as noted during the IGS, our literature review is from the first day that we begin our research until the day before the VIVA itself. <clears throat> that is our literature review. Although we will not be uh, including everything in the literature review, we need to stay up to date. We need to stay in a way that well informed, All right? So we need the latest studies. We need the latest information. That's the reason why for the scope and limitation in a way that this study is conducted within this time period, all right? And with respect to these references, if there are new references later on, if it shall be affecting our study, that is after the research was completed. Uh, so have up-to-date literature. So to compare, Definitely, definitely, we need more than one study. So here is an example of Meta and Tawari. And then in comparison to Laios, all right? Here is example as well. Notable users of this classification system are, uh, means that, oh, this thing is being done by others as well. These are the authors. This is still basic reporting with a little bit added comparison. Means that you are not just reviewing one study, you are reviewing other studies as well. So comparison is a little bit upgrade from command. A little bit more than just basic reporting. Means that you are venturing further within the limitation of your study. You are moving further outside, not outside the boundary, but within outside of your scope. You know what others are doing as well. So whom uh, have you included in your literature review? Compare. Oh, this guy, choose this. The other guy did it as well. So this system is okay. Something like that. All right. So from command, we move to compare still easy level, okay? But the next step, the next stage of review will be to contrast. But before that, this is the last study on comparison, this example of comparison, where same area, same component, but dissimilar result. This can still be noted as comparison. We are, have yet to reach to the contrast because we are comparing the same component. Uh, this study did this, this study did that. 
their result may or may not be similar. So paragraph number two, similar valve, similar findings. Paragraph number three, similar valve, but dissimilar result. Yes, you can do that as well. This is still within the boundary of comparison activity, right? So be extra cautious in a way that have it step by step. We do not wish to confuse ourselves between comparison and to contrast. Contain yourself. Perform the review step by step. Compare first, all right, upon your review, upon your command, compare, and then finally you shall be indicating any contrasting from other research as well. So this was this is an example of a contrast. For Velagapudi, no data was recorded during ongoing motorcycle. However, another study said we need to have it recorded while it is ongoing. Ah, so now it is contrasting, contrasting statement, but with respect to the same scope of study. Ah, this is where you need to be practicing extra cautious because we need to ensure that the contrast is still within the same area of study. If we contrast from outside, of course, it is not the same. Uh, we need to com contrast studies which are within the same scope. Uh, the Velagapudi is on muscle activity. Bridger was also on muscle activity, but their statements are contrasting. Their data collections were contrasting with one another. Okay, do not make the mistake of contrasting studies which are outside the same scope. That's the part where we need to be careful. If we do that, of course, it is not the same. It's the different area. It's common sense. Okay, so practice extra cautious. Find studies which are focusing on the same scope. It's quite challenging, actually, to find that. So we are actually spending more time to find for literature. So allocate yourself maybe some days or hours or maybe one times a day, two times a day in attaining good literature. Uh, it's quite difficult actually. It takes time and it takes patience, okay? We need to ensure that we are contrasting studies as noted within the same scope. If the examiner caught you that it is not, then it is a waste of work. Uh, so it gives a hint of uh, maybe not major correction, but a hint of ability in regards to your overall competency in performing literature review, right? <clears throat> so here is an example. <coughs> Excuse me. The first paragraph will be on valve, second also on valve, but the configuration is now different. So this is the contrast, still on valve configuration, but instead of using the decimal valve, I'll be using the conventional spring operated valve. This is the contrast, okay, still on valve, but different configurations. The result may or may not be the same. Do not matter, okay? As long as what we are contrasting is within the same scope of study, within the same point of view, it is correct. Uh, this is not command, this is contrast. So minor correction on the first line, literature contrast with multiple paragraphs and citations. Okay, so the first paragraph will be to comment. The second paragraph is to contrast. 
the Grima study uh, still on valve, but different configuration. So practice extra cautious in order to ensure that the one that we are contrasting is still within the same scope of study. That's the reason why we perform the comment and compare first. We don't immediately contrast because we would like to ensure the accuracy of our review. If it's jumbled up here and there, it's poorly prepared. Then you need to perform a whole lot of correction for your work. It will not be the things that you would wish to do upon your Viva, because after Viva, you would like to just chill around. Okay, so prepare it good the first time, prepare it good every time. So the last part, will be to critique. Ah. Here's an example. However, what sort of comparison performed was not detailed. So this study here is say that, oh, this guy did this. Oh, I did this ah, in this in that study by Snyder. However, what sort of things that he did was not detailed. So I can say that. Okay, this is to provide criticism. You mentioned this, but you don't provide much more information on it. Other than that, that's it. So provide your feedback. This is where to showcase your ability to become the PhD holder later on. Okay, means that you don't just stand there and watch. You provide feedback as well. At the master level, might not be critical. At undergraduate, definitely not critical. But for PhD, yes, indeed, we need to provide feedback. Okay, you agree, disagree, yeah, say something. Say something in regards to your review. That is proper review. We don't just report, we don't just compare, we don't just contrast, we provide our feedback as well. Uh, so we are an active reviewer. Uh, if we are just review and analyze without providing feedback, uh, we can stay a bit passive still. If we provide feedback, we provide our take on other people's work, all right? But it needs to be based on something, not just, oh, I don't like his work, because I don't like him. Uh, that's not academic. Uh, that is not proper. So, okay, you disagree, why? Oh, because there are better ways to do it. How that you can propose? Even better if the one that you will be proposing is supported by other studies as well. Uh, now it's an academic, review not just a review not just to criticize uh, but with a foundation of knowledge now you are there now you can become the phd holder so now it's the contrast and critic combo <laughs> so yes we can have a combo as well so the first green box contrast okay dissimilar scales were used in these two studies okay both, both studies use scale. I think it was one to 10, I suppose, or one to five. Okay, both are using scales, but different skills. One is using Borg, the, others, the other one is using CP50. Okay, so still on scale, but contrasting type. Okay, contrasting types. So then I can provide the critique. Oh, yeah, it's good. Using scale is good. However, that is an academic way. My supervisor remind me to provide a polite criticism in a way that we are not doing some cheap shot. We provide it in a way that your own point of view, but the way you present it, it has to be honorable. Uh, means that we have it presented in an academic manner. Okay, don't use the video, oh, because this guy, his method is not good. Is that academic? No. Uh, oh, why is it not good? Uh, provide explanation. Uh, if you say, oh, I don't like him because it's not good. Uh, that is non-academic review. An academic review or an academic critique for that matter, provide a greater amount of explanation. Why? How can you improve it? Uh, don't just say it's not good. Show how it can be made better. Uh, so provide additional 
explanation uh, because that is academic now else it just be a non-academic review anyone can do it and I, uh, can you say bad things about this anyone can do that just to criticize anyone can do it any keyboard warrior can do it okay if just to criticize but with a foundation of knowledge it's different we can tell uh, we can tell a person if they are just criticizing for the sake of criticizing or providing constructive feedback the difference is quite apparent actually okay so here is an example okay critique and then utilizing the critique to support your study uh, this guy did this yeah it's good however these are the weakness therefore this weakness is now the research gap uh, this is another example okay in doing this approach i've i can focus this weakness or this uh disadvantage okay hence uh, provide your feedback and your feedback might as well be supporting your own study but the one that you are reviewing if it's just one or two might not be strong enough have it several studies uh, because as noted in the previous slide that particular classification systems uh, that particular classification system were utilized by various studies if you don't agree okay now what's next so you can use it to your advantage this is an example of a chapter one content in chapter two the research gap is presented in chapter two so before we move on to the next section which is the last section any questions so far or do you wish to address anything for the time being um no so far there are no questions being asked so right. we can continue doctor thank you very much so now we are at the last part of chapter two okay before we conclude of course we or oh, my recommendation we conclude our chapter two with this section subsection in chapter two research gaps we have presented information which support our chapter one which then later as well be supporting our chapter three all right so we have both already we have connected our chapter one and three by having our chapter two and we now my recommendation we close the chapter with the research gaps okay so the definition of research gap is here okay uh, it is an area which is yet to be explored or minimally or underexplored. Okay, we can say uh, not fully documented or oh, something like that. Yeah, sure, we can do that. But if it is not fully documented, make sure it is not because let's say your examiners goes to the science index or whatsoever and look for it uh, and appears to be a whole lot, you'll be in trouble. So be honest in your findings okay means that if it is not there say is this not there if it is there but under so show which part it is not fully explored okay as we know research gaps could be explicitly or non-explicitly mentioned by the previous studies okay so this is where reading technique is important when you are reviewing your literature okay so when you got your uh references your citations how do you read it uh, that's another thing as well there is a technique okay we read not the whole thing in the first visit okay we visit the same paper multiple times the first time just to go through it uh, that's one technique the second time, ah, then we go deeper. Usually, we shall start with the abstract. Read the abstract first, and then the conclusion, <laughs> not the introduction. Why? Because we would like to examine the findings of the study. 
the findings will be noted what to be found will be noted in the abstract and then the conclusion will be closing remarks so we check just the two of that first uh, if it is related to your study uh, then you can visit it again else keep it aside have it as your bibliography okay so as noted here this is an example of research gaps which are explicitly mentioned for future studies. More studies and explorations are recommended for this area. Good for you. Now you can do that. This study told you to do it. Explicitly mentioned. Other design parameters uh, could be studied. Good for you. Now you can do that. This study can be your major citation. Explicitly noted. If you can find, if you manage to find such citation, good for you. Ah, it means that that's your luck to find it. Okay? So good job if you do. If you are not fortunate, for example, this one, this study only focuses on the physical aspect of human error in relation to motorcycling. Other aspects were not examined. So this study do not provide the convenience of notification in a sense that, oh, I don't do this, can you do it? Uh, not directly. No. It is not directly noted, but still, if you are able to read between the line, this is a research gap, okay? This study provide the opportunity for further examinations. They don't tell you, but based on that statements, yes, you can, all right? So here's an example of non-explicitly mentioned, okay, for potential research gap. So read carefully, do not, read in a rushing manner that you might miss the little things uh, okay so be able to read between the line be patient sometimes it will take a long time to examine a paper true okay if it's taking too much of your time take a break for example take a refreshment um excuse me doctor yeah there, there was a question regarding to the previous slide, I if I'm not mistaken, uh -huh. right. from Miss Mariam. She asked, do we have to put citation in a research gap statement? So, depends. It depends on the research gap. Okay, if it is noted as here, okay, uh, this one, you need to provide citation. This study told me to study this area. So, that is the research gap as noted by a previous study. Uh, I think this slide should be able to explain better to the question or to answer better to the question. In certain aspect, yes. Okay, means that research gap. Okay, how do you found the research gap? Oh, based on reviewing this study. This study said, go ahead and study this. So, okay, I'll study this now. Uh, so means that you are now going to contribute to that particular area of research. Uh, explicitly mentioned. If it is non-explicitly mentioned, yes, you can have it informed as well. This study said that he or she only completed this area of scope, or this particular scope of study. Therefore, other areas outside this particular scope now can be studied. That is research gap as well. Uh, so at best, the research gap, you found it, okay? From where? Uh, that from where is your citation? So yes, indeed, provide that in your literature review. Where, where you found this? Uh, oh, I found this by examining this paper. Uh, okay, good. Oh, I don't find it anywhere. I looked through this area, but nobody did this. Ah, okay, as well. No citation means that you want to do that area, but you cannot find anything. Means that nobody is, it is indeed underexplored. So what 
anyone, what everybody else have completed, you should inform as well. Ah, oh, this area, nobody studied this. I don't know why. Ah, you can include that. Okay. Ah, uh, that's another question. If I'm mistaken, Mr. Uh, Ifan. Yes, doctor. From Mr. or Ms. Zuraini, uh, they ask, Doctor, could you please show an example how to determine the subtopic or flow of subtopic in Chapter 2? Oh, all right. So the flow of the Chapter 2, what can be presented? If you would like to ask me that question, I don't have the slide for that. But how to do it, we can use the structure from Chapter 1. Okay. So the flow of chapter two is that first we will go through, we visit our chapter one content. So let's say your 1.1 is introduction, the background of study, where the whole, the bigger picture, uh, start from the bigger picture first. So 1.1 coincides with 2.1. A more detail of the things from 1.1 is provided in 2.1, okay? So if your first paragraph in 1.1 is about motorcycle accident, okay? You can have it in one paragraph. Oh, there's a lot of motorcycle accident. So I want to do that. All right. So in 2.1, you will be informing on the accident, but now you provide the statistics, worldwide statistics. Oh, in this country, this much, on that country, that much. We do not wish to over condense our chapter one chapter one is about just what five pages the most or ten the most okay the things which are more detailed on chapter one is presented in chapter two ah the background of study chapter one is like a summary 1.1 is the summary of 2.1 so have it interconnected okay so the background of study so start from there that is the flow uh, and then goes to problem statement. Uh, where you got your problem statement? Uh, then that is your 2.2, let's say. How you get it? Uh, once you have completed every single subsections from chapter one, you move on to chapter three. Uh, so then the things in 3.1, the decision from 3.1 is made by the review in 2.3, let's say, uh, is interconnected. So from there, we can see the flow. We start with chapter one, the information, and then chapter two, return back to chapter one in a way that we provide more information. So the problem statement in 1.2, let's say, oh, these are the statement. Where you gotten that statement? is further elaborated in chapter two. Uh, means that we go from chapter one and then chapter three. Uh, that is my recommendation in writing your chapter two. Means that every single subsection from chapter one and three is being elaborated in detail in chapter two with respect to someone else's work not yours. Your work is in chapter one and three and beyond. Chapter two, you are reviewing others. Okay. So my suggestion, the flow, you need to refer your one and three. So your proposal, actually you, you can do it in a concurrent way. Okay. So we have this one. Uh, we have it this one. We have it this one. We have it this one again. So the flow of chapter two will coincide to the flow of chapter one and three. Start with chapter one first and then move on to chapter three. Because as I've noted earlier, everything returns back to chapter two. So in much more detail or an elaborated manner. So chapter one, just all surface level. Chapter three, all decision level. Everything will be based on chapter two as a standalone. Uh, that is my suggestion. You follow the flow of your own research. Uh, so have it tailored made in accordance to the need of your 
chapter one and three. Uh, mean there is nothing missing in between. All right, hopefully that answered the question. So here's what we have seen earlier. Another one here and also another one here. Okay, this is the content of chapter one in chapter two. This is the problem statement. This is also from the problem statement, okay? So it is noted here that the content for chapter one and three will be elaborated in much more detail in chapter two. Why are we doing it? It's being noted deeper in chapter two, all right? So we are at the last part of our chapter two, which is the closure, okay? So this is what I have noted earlier. We shall, or my recommendation that we shall close our chapter two as a whole by highlighting the research gaps again. Why? Because we would like to ensure that our reader and especially the examiners are on track with respect to the flow of the proposal or thesis. Again, we would like to emphasize on the necessity of our study and to solidify the novelty. And finally, summary of selected literature. You can have 100 over literature, but at the last part of chapter two, my recommendation, provide the top 10 in a table format, okay? So this is an example here, 2.6. <clears throat> this is gaps found, all our statement, very little citation, because this is your work now, not someone else. This is what I found. This is the part which are missing in the previous study. So you cannot cite because it's the missing part, all right? So this is from my actual thesis, which I have uh, edited a bit, okay? So I have it in a numberized manner. So four research gaps, <clears throat> all right? These research gaps will be the evidences in supporting the entire study, all right? So this is the table of which we can choose our top 10 literatures, okay? We provide it as a summary. This is the key literature for my study. Actually, it can be of question from the examiners. Uh, what are your top citations? Why? So this is it. You can have it this way. You can even have it uh, shown during the proposal defense and viva in this particular manner, okay? This is the summary of the entire literature review. This can be utilized to minimize the number of slides in your presentation. Because remember, you have 20 minutes for everything. You cannot have 70 slides for your slideshow. Yes, you can, but you are rushing. It will not look appropriate. So certain chapter can be summarized in such a fashion. So chapter two, we can do it this way, right? So finally, the conclusion to this workshop, okay? As noted, literature review is the foundation. Without chapter two, there is no research at all. We can say that, okay? The very foundation, the very ground of everything. Without it, you are building a castle in the air. <laughs> There's no ground for it. Your structure is without a support. As strong as your chapter one could be, without chapter two, the examiner can have it crumbling down as easy as it is, okay? So we need to ensure that every single step, every single decision is based on the previous studies. So that's the reason why it takes time. 
to read more and be up to date with the references. So we need to learn to assess the literature in a systematic and orderly manner. But most importantly, in reviewing literature, we need to comment, compare, contrast, and critique. So the epilogue is here. This is the recap of our learning outcome. Uh, hopefully, by now, you shall have a good grasp on the fundamentals of chapter two. Now you can start your chapter two if you are a newbie. Okay, you are new students. Don't call that new, of course. But let's say they are just getting started. Everyone is a beginner. Remember that. I'm not saying that there's a quote from Honda. Uh, when Honda joined the F1 in the 80s, they don't know anything. The Honda, the top players said that everyone is a beginner at first. So it is okay. If you are not sure, it is all right. Try. Then slowly improve. So for ongoing student, improve your literature. It's a never-ending process. True. But learn to have a way that you stop doing it and submit it for your proposal. Do not be a perfectionist in this particular manner. If we would like to edit our work, it's an endless, endless procedure an endless trip so have a time allocated we need to submit we need to have it completed within or at best before time so if we would like to edit everything we will be never complete our phd uh doctor yeah excuse me there is a, another question ah from... let me finish it first and then we have it all right all right okay. just a bit more thank you very much so hopefully by the end of this workshop, you will be a better academician and of course researcher than I am because it will be an endless journey of self-improvement. If you become fast, I uh, need to become faster. That is the best part of this, okay? We improve each other. So based on your questions, based on your feedback, I need to improve my presentation, I need to improve my slides, so on and so forth. So I need to become better as well. Why? That is how it is fun. That is academic. Academics should be fun. We make ourselves better upon meeting one another. It's an endless journey of self-improvement. So as we have discussed at the beginning of our workshop, Remember that we, you, as of right now, you need to become your own bigger supporter, your own source of strength. No matter how good or how rigid your support group is, at the end of the day, it will be from yourself. So have the inner courage first in order to complete your PhD. So thank you very much for myself. Okay, so now let us address the questions. Uh, feel free to contact me as well after the workshop. Okay, you can contact me anytime. You can just uh, WhatsApp me or email me whatsoever. You are highly welcome. So what is the question, Mr. Nick Yerfan? Um. Okay, so we can commence the Q&A session. We have two questions as of now. One uh, from Nur Azura Muhammad Yusuf. They ask, for 10 key references, should they come from empirical work alone? Depends. It all depends on your research because you are the one who will be deciding your top 10, your top five. Uh, the goal is this literature will be the one that you will uh cite the most okay uh it depends on your own study you don't have to compare it to others it can be empirical it cannot be not empirical does not matter as long as this top 10 
studies could justify the need of your study could be the best evidence for all your decisions then so be it uh, because if you can if the examiner question you why you select this one and you can present yourself you can defend your decision you can stand to your own judgment no problem at all uh, so this is your study at the end of the day your supervisor will be the guide uh, the phd is for you so you decide your top 10 so find the common ground if the supervisor is involved where to select the top 10 for instances or the entire study for that matter okay at the end of the day you will be the one facing the examiner not your supervisor or anyone else so it's your decision if you think that this literature is the one to be your top 10 that is on you you need to be able to defend it you need to be able to stand by it ah, that's it okay thank you doctor now on to the next question uh, from nurul huda binti nik zul kipli in your opinion doctor how many references would be sufficient in producing review paper oh review paper okay a review paper uh for my own personal point of view i think anything above 15 should be okay uh, because it's a review paper so you need to review studies isn't it so anything above 15 20 something should be nice but it depends on the area actually if the area is underexplored, it might not be anything at all. Uh, as noted in my previous, uh, in my PhD previously, that area is very lacking. I need to cite papers outside of my area, which is close enough. I was performing on motorcycle riding posture. There was none. So I refer to sitting, normal sitting. So anything close enough. So your review paper, it all depends on your area, okay? If you can attain, but of course, it cannot be known as review paper. If you just review five papers, it will not look good. So how can you increase the amount of paper is from the basic fundamentals of review itself. If you can find identical studies, that is under comparison. Uh, so that alone can be like, 10 to 15, let's say. And the contrasting studies, huh, another 10 to 15. So strategize in a way that uh, it is not too congested, but it is well presented in a way that what you are trying to convey is conveyed. Uh, the one that you would like to address is being addressed to the reader, okay? the quality of the literature for me is much more important than the quantity uh, the quality one of the quality might as well be the up-to-date information uh, if you review 50 studies let's say but everything is from the 90s might not be the best idea might not be it could be but have it justified i think there's another question so hopefully that answered the question so above 15, 20 something should be nice for a review paper, but it depends on your area. Thank you, Doctor. There are two more questions to be exact. Um, one from Rachel. She ah, asked, right. if we are conducting a case study research like a specific town, should the research profile information of the town be in the chapter one or two? as she had compared certain papers were sometimes in chapter one or two when the authors described the location. Mm. So if you would like to review a case study, if it is vital to your method, that's wrong. Uh, at best it is. Okay, if because we need to justify because if you would like to review a particular sound, for example, why that sound? 
Uh, that's the, the basic question. Can we do it any other place? Okay. So a little bit information is provided in chapter one and then deeper reason on the selection for that particular area needs to be provided in chapter three, uh, not just two. Chapter two, remember, chapter two, we are reviewing other people's study, not yours. Uh, chapter three is the one that we will be justifying why we select that area in particular, okay? Chapter two is everything which are not your study just yet, okay? So you as the author, your research items will be in one and three and beyond the most. Chapter two, you will be reviewing studies which conduct on maybe the same town or other towns. Does not matter, okay? The most important thing is how they do it, what they did uh, for their own research, okay? Your study, the town of your choice needs to be presented in one and three, most importantly, not two. Two will be other people's. If they did on the same town, okay, even better. If they don't, it's okay. Uh, so that is the most important aspect. Chapter two is everyone else except yourself. Maybe just a bit. Oh, they did in this town, but not in this town. So I choose this town because of that. Uh, if you would like to have it as a research gap, let's say nobody did this in this part of town, in this particular point of view. Okay. Justify, provide the evidence. So that evidence is in chapter two. Uh, chapter one and three will be focusing on your own. Chapter two will be on others. All right, hopefully that answers your question, Miss Rachel. Great, thank you, Doctor. For the next question it comes from Muhammad Safwan bin Abdul Latif. He asked, Doctor, what is the difference between theoretical and conceptual framework? Do we need both? For example, I only have conceptual framework and underlying theory in chapter two. Mm. So for that one, you need to refer your supervisor uh, because different supervisor will have a different point of view in regards to that. And most importantly, theoretical and conceptual framework is an entire different workshop actually. I think they are a much better person who can describe that area outside of myself, okay? Because theoretical framework and conceptual framework actually much more related to chapter three with respect to the research methodology as well. Uh, why we, we do this, why we do that, uh, and how we do this, how we do that. So that is closer to research methodology workshop. So for your question, as of now, my best response is discuss with your supervisor. One, secondly, refer to the literature, which one they perform the most or which one will be best suit your own research. Uh, because at the end of the day, it will be with respect to your aim and your research objectives. So what is the best way to get there? Choose it instead, okay? So it will be totally dependent on your own, not on others. Others may or may not practice the same method. However, refer back to your own. Reflect with respect to your aim and your research objectives. Discuss the matter with your supervisor. If it is necessary, why not? If it is not necessary, justify why it is not necessary, why it has to be there, why it has not to be there. So find literature that support your decision. Okay, but theoretical and conceptual framework in general, I might not be the best person to describe it. Okay, so find other, uh, my recommendation, you need to seek advice from someone who is much more proficient in that area other than myself. 
Is that all of the answer, doctor? Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, doctor. Are there more questions to be asked from the participants? Ah, there are one more. There is one more from Hikma Yusuf. Doctor, if the issue do not have much literature from previous study, can preliminary study being written oh. in chapter two in respect to justify the necessity of the research being conducted? Yeah, true in it. Uh, preliminary study can also be utilized to support your own. But of course, those preliminary study have it strengthened by reviewing others, okay? As noted, it may not be directly related to your own, okay? For example, as I have noted, I'm doing on motorcycling riding posture, nothing is there. So I choose to review sitting, the closest thing to it first. Uh, and then the preliminary study can further highlight on the necessity. So yeah, uh, because in this world, so maybe new area, new studies can be conducted, definitely. So yes, indeed, preliminary study can be utilized. Means that you have conducted a data collection, okay? preliminary data collection so that, hey, we need to do this now. Previously, it is not warranted, but now it is. Uh, and I've showcased that uh, nobody did this area. All they did was that area. What are the areas? Show it, highlight it. And this area were not. Why? Maybe because of this, maybe because of that. But today in this ever-changing world, now there is the need for the easiest example online class uh, previously there's not uh, maybe just a few but today is a necessity so if you would like to study on online classes today there might not be any literature at all previously because previously all are face to face very minimal online classes but today almost everyone is online classes so the world is ever changing so as I have noted to other uh, students, our current situation can be utilized to your advantage for your study, especially on the pandemic. Okay. Discuss with your supervisor, of course, in a way that previous knowledge could no longer be implemented today because the world has changed in a drastic manner. So all the previous knowledge needs to be revamped. It needs to be updated. So previously, there's no need to do it. But now there is due to that. Hence, you, yes, you can absolutely, I do agree, if you wish to utilize your preliminary study to showcase the necessity for your PhD or for your master. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. Good job if you are doing it. it means that you are proactive. So that's my answer. Thank you, doctor, for that enlightening answer. Um, I would like to ask the participants, are there more questions to be asked before we move on to the closure of today's workshop? Uh, if you have any other questions, maybe not today, uh, feel free to drop me a text or an email. Okay. So uh, FYI, these slides will be provided to the organizer. And if you wish to have the slides, yeah, I will give it in full. No changes at all. Okay. So as noted, academics should be fun. So we need to continuously improve. It means that when I give it to you, I need to improve myself in providing better content too. Okay. So the next workshop, if it is in chapter two again, I'll be using a better slide as well. So this slide, you can have it. You can share it with your colleague if you want. Uh, of course, it's a free webinar, as always. Hmm. So I'll have it delivered to the organizer, or if you wish to have it urgently, I might say, you can contact me directly. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Izzat. Um, before we move on to the closure, I have a couple of announcements to make. 
On behalf of the organizer, I would like to invite all participants to join our fifth workshop that will be held on August 25th, 2021. I repeat, on August 25th, 2021, which is on Wednesday from 3 to 5 p.m. The topic will be on Turn It In for Instructors and Students. The speaker for that workshop will be Dr. Nur Hayati Abdul Rahman. She is one of the coordinators in the Division of Research and Industrial Linkages. E-certificates will be provided via email to all participants and training hours will be registered for all UITM staff. Secondly, to those asking for the slides and recording of this webinar, we will be providing it both to you via email. You can also visit UITM's official YouTube channel to re-watch the webinar once the video has been uploaded. Um, another thing, before we end our workshop today, I would like to remind the organizer that we have a photo session right at the end of the workshop. So I kindly ask all of the participants to turn on their camera and prepare themselves for a photo session. If you would, please turn on your camera now. Okay, great. We shall be waiting for more, I hope, everyone. If you can't, if you have a cam any camera problems, it's okay. We can see you in the chat. We appreciate your existence in today's workshop. Okay, let's take the picture on a count of three. Everyone smile to the camera. Three, two, one. Okay, we will be taking another one. Hold on. Three, two, one. Thank you so much for the camera and the photo session. And as for the closure part, thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Izai for this motivating and insightful detailed explanation on the research proposal drafting for chapter two. And thank you so much for all the participants who have stayed until the end of this session. We, as the organizer, hope this session has helped everyone to have a better understanding of today's topic. That is all the time we have for today's workshop. And once again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our speaker, Dr. Izzat, for being here today and for sharing his free knowledge with us. And I would also like to thank all the participants for participating in the evening's workshop. Before we officially end today's session, the organizer would like to remind all participants to fill their particulars for attendance and feedbacks via the link provided in the chat box. So the e-certificates, slides, and recordings of the webinar will be provided in the chat boxes. Uh, sorry, in the email. Forgive me for that. Uh, training hours will be registered for all UITM staff. That is all for now. Thank you and have a nice day. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Nick Irfan. Have a good